Laurent is, well firstly, Laurent is my cousin. He is, um, his disability is he has Down syndrome and autism. Um, and he is a, he's a very, he's a man with great sense of humour. He's got a great sense of wit and a, and a quite a kind of um, cheeky sense of wit at times. Uh, I, I've obviously grown up with him. He's my first cousin, and, and I love him very dearly. And he's a he's a he's a kind he's a kind soul as well. When did you first become aware that he had a disability? It's a good question. I don't. I can't really pinpoint when I knew that. I think more was when I pin when I realised that not everyone else knew what a learning disability was or wasn't necessarily. Um, educated about it or that was more when I realized that and that was probably when I was quite young around seven or eight when we're out taking taking Laurel for a, a day out and and maybe it was then that I, I realized that I was quite privileged in knowing someone so closely who had a learning disability. Is it sad isn't it I mean sometimes people are scared of it scared of people with disabilities yeah. or especially with learning disabilities, they, they, they don't understand it. So, so it is quite privileged, I suppose, from the age of seven or eight to... Yeah, I feel, I've, I feel very, I've always felt very privileged knowing Laurel and, and, and understanding him and understanding uh, in some ways how, how to be around him. And, and, and um, I think, yeah, I, I, I think there is still a lot of stigma attached to learning disability which, which needs to be dispelled and that comes through people knowing people and meeting people with a learning disability and that comes through um, uh, through engagement and, and through integrating people with learning disability more into our society which is amazing that it's that we're not quite there yet but we're, we're getting there. What is it that you feel so passionately about? Why is it that you want to trek all the way out here to, to talk about um, what's happening with, with the charities? Look, Men, Mencap has, and other charities, but Mencap has been incredibly supportive and helpful to my cousin all through his life and continues to be. Um, and it's, I would go as far as saying it's been essential to him. Uh, and without it, I don't know what my my aunt would have done without that kind of support uh, and, and care and, and advice. Um, and it's in, right now, it, we are kind of on a brink of, of, a, of a crisis where Mencap and other charities are, are going to be faced with a huge bill which they simply can't pay. And without, and if they're forced to pay this bill, then, then the care that they They've given someone like my cousin Laurel throughout his life the the 178,000 people with severe learning disabilities in the you know in this country are going to be left without that care and that support and I I just I just know that can't happen so this is a kind of this is a real a really uh, crucial moment for Mencap and other charities. Did, did Laurent live in, um, in a place like this? I mean, has he lived in, in independently in the community? Yeah, so Laurent, uh, very like these guys here, is, um, is a profound learning disability and, and needs 24-7 care, needs a, a sleeping carer. Um, and he has, in, in the best scenarios he's been in throughout his life, been in some been lucky enough to be in some really great homes with with some of his friends and I think that's a crucial point as well it's not it's not just finding a, a place for someone with a learning disability and just throwing them in there it's about finding the right place for them and with the right people friends that they get on with friends that they know these the guys here it's it's a it's a really ideal situation because they've known each other, each other since they were four and they know each other's ways and they and and specific disability and they have carers who've been with, you, with them for a long time and this is a great house. This is, this is what we should be aiming towards for everyone with a, with, a, with a learning disability. Well it is too about being back in the community isn't it, being in the community so they are part of yeah. an ordinary neighbourhood and an ordinary street. Absolutely, yeah. It's, yeah and it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's so important for, not just for them, but for us as a community to be living 
next door and with and around uh, people with learning disabilities so it's not a stigma so there isn't all of those those bad adjectives of fear and and um, and uh, not understanding. So where is he at the moment? Laurent is down in Somerset with my aunt. He's, they've moved out of London, so they're now living in Somerset. And he's, he's very happy with my aunt. We, will, we are looking to get him back into a, uh, a home, a situation very similar to this one down there. Um, but he's sort of in a, a little bit of limbo living back with my aunt, but he's, he's very good, he's very happy. Did, did, um, when you spoke to your aunt, I mean, when you had told her what you were doing, w what was her thinking about this? Because presumably she's concerned about um, the cost, because it's not just to MenCap and the charities, it's actually to people who are also responsible for looking, who have, a personal, who, who have personal payments and so on. She's very concerned. I spoke to her this morning, um, just to catch up before coming here. Um, and she's, she's got a, uh, a friend of hers who has a son in, a, in a, more of an institution. And, and is, it's not ideal. It's, not, it's far from ideal, in fact. It's not, it's not good. Um, and I think she's, very, she's worried for MenCap. She's worried about the, the local authorities not, not having the money to, to pay what they need to pay, to support who they need to support. Um, and she is essentially said what I think, which is this, this, can't, this can't happen. This, this, this bill can't be allowed to, to be laid at the back of, of on, on John Charity's doors. Can I just ask, you've talked really eloquently about what Laurent um, has given to you. Is he aware of just how famous you are? <laughs> yeah, I don't think he cares whatsoever, and that's why I love him. Uh, he, uh, I remember he came to see me in a play once, and um, and I think he liked that. He loved he loved Warhorse, the play I was in. But I don't think he's a big Thrones fan, no. No way. <laughs> no, he likes his Disney. Game of Thrones isn't for him, I don't. So if you got a Pixar or something like that, he might be okay. He liked How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah. And that's that was one I was in. So my my aunt told me he really enjoyed that. Okay. Well, you know what to aspire to now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm aiming for if I can get in Sesame Street or Disney, you know, I'll be a hero in Laurel's in Laurel's eyes. So that's that's the aim for me. Well, good luck. Thank you.